So team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Boland. Today we've got episode two of our talk with um, Brian Douglas, Susie Allnott, Amy Sinks, Gareth Gatrell, Chiabella James, and one of my favourite photographers on the planet, Jay Maidman. Now, uh, Jay's uh, actually a little bit older than me, but you know, that's the way, that's why I look up to him. Hey, so we're going to hook straight into photos today in what we call uh, Five Photo Folio, where we've all submitted five photos. That just meant something to us yesterday as we're thinking about it, and we're going to talk through the images and um, fill you guys in on the process that went about them. So enjoy and uh, have fun. Amy, you uh, you put your hand up before, so. What have I led myself in for? I think this is just such a powerful image. I mean, there's so much going on. And, and the the funny thing about I had an image which was of background um, cast and uh, I took it out but because this really sums it up. And a film for me is only as good as the, as the back, background actors and, you know, these guys are 100% putting everything in. And, and sorry, Amy, give us a little bit of a rundown on this beautiful, beautiful image. Sure. So this was from season three of Outlander. And this was such a, a gritty kind of scene. So we're in um, Ardmore Prison here. And if you're unfamiliar with the show, there's this real hatred between the Scots and the Redcoats, who you can see kind of framed in the foreground. And just the, I love the look that um, the character of Jamie is giving um, this red coat. Like you can see all of that hatred there. And even though he's a prisoner, like you can see he's he's balling his fish. You can see that anger and that strength in him. And I love the, um, I say the background artist as well behind him, who's just given him that look. You know, he he's noticed his presence. Everyone can see that even though this man is in chains, he is a really formidable kind of guy. Um, and I just absolutely love the, the performance from everybody on here. Uh, and you're absolutely right. When you're shooting big scenes where there are a lot of background artists as well, it's you know you need everybody to be really um, switched on to that scene and that emotion because all it can take is for for one person to kind of be looking like they don't really care, and it kind of kills the whole energy that everyone else in that frame has built up. So. Um, now the, these guys were all absolutely fantastic. Yeah, no, it's um, it's an awesome shot, right? So what do we got next? And oh, hold on, I have to go over here. Uh, now look, I mean, your, your framing here is just, you know, I mean, what we do as photographers is we're there to tell a story of in one frame, and you know, take it's it away. I, I absolutely love this set. We were, this was um, a scene that we shot right at the end of the day. Um, it was one of those, oh, let's try and you know squeeze it in so we don't have to go over kind of thing. And it just, as soon as we stepped on it, I loved it. I loved the, um, the styling, the colours. And to me, this kind of, like, this shot for me personally feels almost like a, a fairy tale fashion editorial or something mm, yeah. like that. Like, there... Um, the way the set design and the costuming all work together is fantastic. And I don't know if you can make out in the foreground, you've got um, this unknown character. Um, yeah. If you know the show, you know who the character is, but in the image, you've got this mysterious um, person in the foreground watching. So it kind of feels very voyeuristic, both from that point of view and also the perspective of the camera is quite voyeuristic. Um, and there's this sense of vulnerability from you know how she's lying. For me, it feels very fairy tale. But then the presence of this person in the foreground kind of makes it potentially something else. And um, yeah, I I, I I think it's one of my favourite shots from um, from this season of Outland. This is season five. Yeah, I got to say, I'm envious of you guys getting all these all this period work because it really it adds. I think it's it's. I always find that um, subjects that I don't know about. Um, I, I get much better photographs, you know, from, you know, like this is period. So, you know, we, we're we not familiar with that in our real life. I think it adds a bit of a spark to our day, right? Mm, 
So I'm definitely uh, feeling the same way about action. <laughs> I, mean, I love period. I, I feel very fortunate to be able to work with all the, um, the amazing costumes and, and sets that we get to uh, see. But uh, yeah, I, action is kind of like where I love to take it. And we're very fortunate with Outlander that we do have some action sequences in there. Or, admittedly, there are very few um, in the terms of explosions, but um, you know we have plenty of sword fights and scuffles, and they're always a, a big highlight for me. Yeah, action. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's my heart's right there. <laughs> and I uh, see. Okay, uh, BTS. What do you What do you say? I mean, they're the, they're the great landscapes of uh, of a film set, really, aren't they? Yeah, they. I think it's great that we can get those moments as well. It gives you an insight into the filmmaking pro, uh, process because a lot of people, you know, they see the finished unit shots and they can relate to that because they've seen the finished film or TV show, but they often don't see everything around it. And um, I love um, BTS shots where it feels like there's loads going on and you, and you feel the, um, the energy and the buzz of everybody on set. Um, this particular scene was just so amazing to to watch like the performance was incredible Every, everyone's there um you know watching this this character give birth to her uh, baby and you, f you felt like cheering afterwards you felt like all the you felt like you were sharing the emotion of the scene and it was such a rush um yeah i absolutely um was blown away to to witness that particular scene so this is, um, again, from season three. So when I um, first joined Outlander, I was kind of thrown in at the deep end and they went straight into the, um, the Battle of Culloden. So I think we were filming for about a week out in the fields there. Um, and although there are other shots that kind of got used and were the, the key shots of this scene. Um, but I absolutely loved this one because I felt like it... <laughs> I, it all, some, some of the other shots can, can glorify this idea of war and heroism. And I, I feel like this is really gritty. You can see like the desperation, almost the resignation, and just to, you know, for the character James to be in amongst all of that, knowing that he could die at any moment. Like, I just thought it was just a real kind of intense moment. Um, and again, this was just like one, like a little um, off section that we filmed. It wasn't, you know, part of the big main fights that was, you know, with all the stuff going on. It's just this really quiet moment. Yeah. And I just loved that look that he's given towards the camera. You kind of just feel that. I don't know if it feels like he's almost resigned, and you're thinking, "Oh God, like what is going to happen? Is he going to survive it?" And you feel like maybe he won't. Yeah, it's like you know he's looking towards the camera and holding out on uh, on on um, you know what the danger is behind him. It's pretty. He's a damn good actor, that boy. Oh yeah, very talented. All right, what do we got? Is this? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from um, Stan and Ollie, and the thing I love most about this film is it was shot near where I live. Um, which never happens. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not based down in London. Uh, I'm based in the Midlands. So 99% um, of the time I've got to travel. So this um, scene was filmed at the Black Country Living Museum, um, which I highly recommend a visit to. It's fantastic. And um, we were recreating their publicity tour that they did to try and revive their final tour. And um, this is one of the things that they did historically um, to, to generate press for their upcoming shows. So I, I just love the colours and the costuming and the fact that just that their expressions, that Coogan and um, Riley did so well at instantly becoming um, Laurel and Hardy. It was just fantastic. What camera did you shoot this on? Because the colour is, for gloomy old England, the colour is beautiful. Um, this would have been my uh, Sony A9. Right, and is there much um, post? Um, yes, I, so I've done a bit of tinkering with um, with colour on that. Oh, cool. Hey, so Jay, this is pretty rad. Where I where, what film is this? 
This is from um, Wrath of the Titans, the sequel to uh, Clash of the Titans, Warner Brothers picture. Um, shot in a very gloomy part of Wales in a quarry. And um, I have to say, behind the scenes is, is probably some of my favourite imagery that I get the opportunity to shoot. Because, you know, the audience are so used to seeing the classic still image um, that is used for publicity. Um, and I really wish more of this sort of stuff was used as well, editorially. Um, and that's where I came, my route came into this industry is through editorial photography. So I have a, a real love for the, the behind the scenes as well as in front of the scenes. Um, in front of the camera, rather. And this is Rosamund Pike. Um, between takes, contemplating probably why she's in a very rainy quarry in Wales. But um, I'm sure she's thinking about the scene as well. She's got her, her <laughs> hair up in the net. Um, and, it, and to me, it kind of just sums up those moments that we all see as still photographers in between takes when everything gets set up. Sometimes the, the actors disappear, as you know. Um, other times they hang around on set. And um, Rosamund is one of those actors that, that is there and stays there. So um, I just thought it was a nice little moment. You can see everybody else intimate. being well. I, I I do I do like to do that. I mean, I'm I'm not one of those photographers that gets in people's faces, and I don't really like the whole long lens stuff. So, um, it's kind of getting as close as you can get without distracting. And I I'm not one of those people that wants to get right in there and have a conversation with the actor while they're taking the photograph. I'd rather just just try and capture the moment that they're thinking about. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. It's like those, those seconds before action is called is um, I find it's like when the, when the actor's the most into their character and um, and you've really captured it here on this. It's pretty, pretty intense. Thank you. And I, and I'd say I, I, I love black and white photography. It, I'm, I was a black and white printer for a very long time at a lab that specialized in, in doing units still. So it's one of my first loves. So whenever I get the opportunity to shoot in black and white, I will, That's regardless of what the studio is saying. I love <laughs> But one of the cameras I, uh, again, Tim, Tim's got, right. Tim Burton is a gift to any still photographer <laughs> because he is, he is there on the set, running around, setting up shots. He's not one of those black tent directors. Um, he is there, sometimes right by the camera. Um, can get in the way sometimes. Um, but he's he's so enthusiastic. And um, again, this is him. He's this is from Dumbo. Setting up a shot with Michael Keaton. Um, massive set. Uh, obviously, you can see the, the crane in there, but he's, he's I think he's setting up where B camera's going to be. But I just love, love the composition of this. Um, and that it tells the story. It's all about, it's all about Tim. Oh, it is, isn't it? It's, it's, um, it is all about Tim. It's, uh, and yeah, I'm with you on black and white. It's just like, it just adds a different dimension and it's almost, I don't know, like the, the mono is kind of almost the unit still photographer and the newspaper photographer or, you know, we own that kind of look, I think. Yeah. Well, and also something like this as well, on this particular set, which um, it wasn't like this on all of the sets on Dumbo, but this had a massive uh, blue screen wrapped around the whole thing because it was, we we're going to put a fairground in, into the back of it. So. I, I just like that black and white just turns it all the tone of grey. Mm. Um, and you're not distracted. Your eye isn't taken away from what's actually in front of you. Um, so if it's blue screen, I tend to bring out the, uh, the like of a bit of black and white. And this is from your film, Jason. This is from Thor Ragnarok. But when I was there working on Doctor Strange... Oh, yes! Oh, when, he, oh, like, hold on. When was when did what did you do on that? So this is the scene that he did, right? Okay, I'm with you. With Emperor, 
And, and Chris came to the set of um, Doctor Strange and we shot a little sequence for a couple of days where the beer glass... It was, it was the beer sequence, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Tiger came to, to shoot that. So we were shooting at Shepparton Studios and I think we came in over the weekend to shoot to shoot this um, with Tiger. Isn't he wonderful? He is, but... I use my hands, as, as I'm sure the video will uh, demonstrate, a lot, and he uses his hands a lot. And yeah. I think that's kind of what I sort of sensed about him is that he's describing constantly what he wants to get out of um, the actors or where he's putting, putting the cameras. And he's got boundless energy as well. And, oh, my um, gosh. Um, I, I hadn't met him before, before this, and I, you know, it was only a couple of days, but I, I thought it was great. Yeah, I've got a film coming up with him next year. Actually, I love working with him. He's just um, he gives he's great for the still photographer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing like having directors that, that are there and present and yeah. being enthusiastic and and trying to, to get that performance out of an actor. And he gets it and too. Then, yeah. Scarlett Lawrence in yeah. uh, the upcoming Black Widow film. This is only one of a few images so far that have been released because the film's been put back until November. You've done, um, a, you've done a few films with Scarlet, right? Two. two uh, right. I worked on um, Avengers Age of Ultron with her and then um, Black Widow. She's but awesome. Got, she is. And we got to travel quite a bit. We went to Norway and Hungary and Atlanta. I ended up in Atlanta for a week. Um, but this is in um, Budapest. I was going to say, didn't you come to Budapest? Yeah, that was last summer in Budapest. Incredibly hot, but amazing. And this um, motorcycle sequence, which you'll see in the film, is incredible. Another, uh, another Marvel picture. Um, After Party was the, uh, sorry, the working title name, the code name for Avengers Age of Ultron. And this is a dream sequence mm -hmm. with uh, Chris Evans and Hayley Atwell. And again, I love behind the scenes. Um, and to get three slates or clapper boards in is uh, a bonus. Um, but I just love the composition as well. You just see um, Hayley in profile through the boards. Really I it. know it's, it's one of the most beautiful slate shots ever. It's it just, is beautiful. Is it the, look river? the flow? The flow through is just insane. Sometimes they just pop in, don't they? I mean, you, you sort yeah. of kind of line up with what you might be a, a two slate thing, and then the third one comes in. It's like, oh man, brilliant! Yeah, it and is. I always, I, I, um, I always ask the boomy to drop the drop his mic in and. Like sometimes yeah. if they don't know me, they're like, oh, sorry, man. They pull it out like, no, 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 I want it in. <laughs> yeah. Nine times out of ten, you're telling them to go up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally. I know, right? It's just no, insane. Yes, you see, that, that is Rivoli Ballroom. Yeah, it's, uh, I've been there so many times and I I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, it's yeah. not set. I mean, it's a, it's a ballroom. You don't have to do much with it. Yeah, yeah they still have, have dances. Dance is there, yeah. That's insane. Hey, who's up next? Oh, Susie, you're up next. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, you got this freaking Casino Royale parkour shot with Gary Powell. Okay, I'm going to oh, look at him right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. Susie. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this, this scene, this scene, the Casino Royale, right? Yep, that is. It's uh, part of the opening sequence. Uh, this was Sebastian Foucan, uh, the free runner, who was playing our yeah. baddies. He is incredible. <laughs> the boy flies. <laughs> um, no, it was one of the. Um, it was one of the first Western films that um, used parkour, right? So th this is Gary. This is Gary Powell, right? That yep, stunt coordinator for this. Powell coordinating. Um, they rehearsed out in the Bahamas. This was a disused, uh, well, it was a never completed hotel in the Bahamas. Um, and it's, uh, it's- Snuff Creek. 
it looks like an ugly place, but it's very, very beautiful. The um, below is gorgeous, and it was a very quiet part of the island. And we were there for, I, I can't remember, I think it was about seven weeks. I'm not sure. Was that right, Jay? How long? How long? We, we, you were there longer than I was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think we were. We came out from Prague. I think we were there for about three or four weeks. Yeah. And you were certainly there before us, and we left you there. Yeah. So, it, yeah. It was an incredible sequence, and the the free running was great. Uh, the riggers were inspired by this and would try it late on a. Uh, late on a Saturday night, they'd try to mm -hmm. pour out at a restaurant. Um, it never ended well. But Sebastian was, um, yeah, truly inspirational. And um, uh, yeah, a lot of yoga, a lot of stretching, and a lot of <laughs> and so many other things. But one of the difficult things with um, this is with parkour, you keep moving, it's the flow of the motion. And obviously with film cameras, you're not shooting it as one continuous shot. So the stopping for him, um, when there's a camera there, the ending of the shot, this abrupt stop it, like it's really so much more difficult than what the usual you know, the way it usually works. But yeah, it was good. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Another one, uh, that was when the main unit came out, um, and Jay and the main unit came out to shoot their stuff, and we got Daniel for um, a few days to kind of do his bits as part of this sequence. Uh, yeah. Lots of running, lots of jumping, and lots of um, action man, action man bond. Um, Brilliant. Brilliant. Actually, I think this was the most fun I've had uh, ever <laughs> on a film. <laughs> that first few weeks. Um, Didn't the downtown motion ruin your, your cameras and the dust? Yeah, there was a lot of time there. People, there was so much dust and sand. Um, that people's computers were packing up, that were working in sort of the dust, dusty office there, our little shack. Um, yeah, dust, dust everywhere. And they were my, this was my first film, fully digital. So I had two oh. very tiny new, uh, what's Nikon D2? Yeah, D2X. 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 After about a week there, they were probably worth about a tenner. I tell you, some <laughs> yeah. yeah. lotion on everything, rotting away bits and pieces. But uh, you know, they carried on for ages, but they didn't look pretty after. After the it was the movie. Susie. It was the first time that you and I, or any Bond film, had shot uh, any digital stills. Oh, oh right there you go. Oh, oh yes, I remember. Oh. All the confusion about how they, to, um, yeah. how they were going to store stuff, whether it was going to be stored as a Nikon file or a Adobe file, what yeah. they were going to use. In the there was a lot of talk about that, wasn't there? But it was, it was good. Yeah. I think it's it's, just, a, it's a stellar shot. And, and what I love about this too is, which is the way I shoot action, is I shoot as slow a shutter speed as I possibly can. Yeah. And anything that is liquid or um you know with snow or water or sand like this it's just like adds so much movement so much more to it and i think that a lot of people it was i was watching um a youtube thing just recently and was, this guy was doing a test on um on birds in flight as they all do and uh, it was raining and so he cranked the shutter up to like you know 2000 of a second or something like that and it was all these little pin pricks and it's like dude why did you do that and then like he, the and i think he realized that he messed up and he started he talked it talked himself around it the reason why he did it and it's yeah. like oh yeah but you know you missed out on that beautiful you know like look at the sand it just it, oh. it adds so much urgency to the image mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it was fun it was to be honest with you it was um I hadn't shot that that much action before, and it was it was you know it was all new um, and a lot, a lot. But again, it's a lot of the time with the unit stuff, we said about the relationships on set and people making the space and helping you out and and mm. you know, them trusting you not to not to get in their way and to listen when it's really important. So the mm. stunt the stunt team on that and the first AD so experienced and so helpful and so kind. And yeah, a big thank you. To Jay for suggesting me for the job because it really uh, well you came out with me on the previous bond on the second unit when we blew some stuff up 
Oh, that is true. Yes, yeah, that, that, that was some full-on training. That was the biggest explosion or something that they've ever done. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, this one, this one, I I love. Shot on film slide, obviously, and um, I wrote a thing on this. I, I've been a bit late to the Instagram party, but I've been to catch up. But my summer of love. Uh, Amazing things that Chris Collins, he's sadly no longer with us, but he, uh, this was up in Yorkshire and it was my first day on set, my first afternoon, uh, and I got there and they were getting on a low loader and I'm like, oh, <laughs> great, that's what I need. So uh, uh, I asked very politely and Richard Lechensky, the DOP, said, well, listen, I need... Um, I need someone to take me to readings because we're going to be going in and out of the sauna and I need my focus color to pull the stop and uh, keep changing it. So, so I jumped on the low loader with my blimp, which we've seen that Jay has shown us. It's not a light or small thing. Um, I had a meter in one hand and my in the other, shooting it and completely awkwardly one handed whilst reading, uh, reading off the readings for the DOP. Um, but it's one of those lucky first afternoons. Sometimes you can just be sitting there twiddling your thumbs, not on the low loader, and sometimes you can be. And it was obviously for Emily. Emily it was, um, great a, a great shot. Yeah. A, a great film that helped launch her, uh, her career. So, um, yeah, a lot of fun up there in Yorkshire. The director, Pavel Kowalski, I probably said his name wrong, is. Um, uh, one of those incredible characters, just incredible. Uh, well, the image speak the how you got the image speaks volumes of uh, how you work on set, and which is exactly what Jay was saying earlier tonight is about having that trust. And and um, I, I can't. There's nothing about this image that I don't love. I mean, it's just glorious. I mean, just the lines, the you know, the framing of the heads into the into the. Um, Lighter background, the trees, the shadows, the you know, and the acting, the, you know, the the friendship. That it's just, mate, I love this shot. Mm. I'm glad they used it. It would have been one of those ones if they had used it. I would have been really yeah, all right. <laughs> Is that? Yeah. Cool? yeah, you can't. That it's been super cloudy. Yeah. You can't miss that so far. <laughs> and James McAvoy. Uh, and that's on trance. Um, it's really interesting. I didn't have much time to put all these together, but um, I don't know about you guys, but I have completely different stuff in my book as to the shots that are on my website. Uh, not not completely different, but the things I get to see in my hard portfolio um, that you don't know, uh, uh, you know, that aren't out in the wider world or didn't make the select of the uh, of the filmmakers when they when they did the release. Um, yeah, this just just makes me think of a whole load of other shots that I would have liked to have given. given. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just uh, it just. <laughs> Where is that? Is, that's located. That's not that's not a set, is it? It's no, no. This most nearly all of the parts was um, uh, location. Um, there was there was some at. Um, Studio, but, uh, but that was location. I can't remember where it was. Uh, yeah, again, the energy of like Danny Boyle and almost like that. Yeah, it's a great shot. When we did James, um, James Bond, when we did uh, Jason Bourne, um, yeah, I did both of them. Uh, <laughs> um, it was, uh, we used to go surfing together. It was because uh, we really? So we'd surf in the afternoon and then we'd go to work at, at, at night. And um, yeah, he's a, he's a really, really cool customer. He is very cool. He's got a very good look about him. Some some people are just, yeah, Steve's photographer's dream. <laughs> oh, now this shot. Oh, wow. I love it so much. Beautiful. <laughs> we, we had a, yeah, I am. Um, this has just come out. It's a Sky HBO show called Gangs of London, and it's very violent. And um, but it's extremely good. Mm -hmm. uh, Gareth, Gareth um, Evans and uh, the DP Matt Flannery, who, who sort of created the series and his other directors and he's involved. But these guys, their energy, their love of action, 
Um, and what they got from um, their, leading, their leading man, Shope, uh, uh, is incredible. Um, and this scene is something else, <laughs> something else. Um, not not dealing with a small child, but uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> what do you do? Is that a meat cleaver? Is that a meat cleaver in his hand? It's a, yeah, it's a meat cleaver, and he's wearing his pants and a pair of wellies. And um, <laughs> I just started watching this the other night. What did you do, Susie? Um, I was just thinking, actually, because I had uh, just got my Nikon Z6. Um, but for this, I think I was using. Uh, I'm a bit, I'm a bit out of date with the Nikon's. If anybody wants to give me an upgrade, that's fine. But probably my Nikon D3S, something like that. Uh, I can't remember one or, one or other. I think it might have been in a blimp. Um, I was switching between that, my 810, and my um, uh, Nikon D3S. So yeah, it's a little bit of a. It's a little bit of a, 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 a mixture at the moment. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love about Nikon? You can talk Nikon all night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do have to buy some new, buy some new kit. But uh, yeah, waiting, waiting for some more work. And uh, but I love the mirrorless. But for this, I think I, I think that was the D3S. Yeah. What I love about this shot, Susie, is um, when you're doing a lot of like action stuff, particularly when it's fighting. The action is sold by the angle and um, often we can't get that angle because the the main camera's there or yeah. it's sold by the way that they chop it all up and, and yeah, edit it, it, and it yeah, to get to get a, a fight between two people where you believe everything that's going on it's just such an incredible get as a as a still shot it's amazing you can turn up for those days and not get much but there's some there's some other ones i really like in this scene but it's really because shoppe and lee sell it they really sell it mm. uh, so yeah. susie on a, on a technical note yes when you shoot action like this are you um af or manual focus oh, um oh, again i mix it I mix it up. I totally mix it up. I kind of see how it goes in the first few few bits because I was struggling a little with uh, getting used to the, the Z6 autofocus. autofocus. I don't know. What, that's probably user error rather than the camera. Um, you know, when you're trying something for the first time, I think that's why I switch back to my my D3S. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I shoot, yeah, sometimes I do shoot manual on, um, on, on action, but it really... It really you know, depends on the light, that, the amount of light available. But I literally got dark scenes, and because they wanted to move around, you know, they weren't overly super open lit. You know, uh, there wasn't loads of lights on it. It's um, they just needed the space to snap each other up. They really did. So. Yeah. Well, at least yeah. with the Z, you've got the dynamic range, so you can you can shoot under low light. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, I found that. Subsequently, on the on this same job, I just I just fell in love with little bed six. It was um, it was yeah. The new and the new the new firmware too with the um with the with the Z cameras uh, is really quite something else. I oh, did yeah. a test just recently. Yeah. I was shooting a big action scene and it was um lo low contrast, low light, and I shot two takes with the Z six, and then I thought oh, and it wasn't anything that was really going to make it. So I just thought I'd pull out a D five and have a crack. And to be honest, the um, the focus was missing in the was either missing in the same points or picking up in the same points, and I really couldn't pick much difference, which quite surprised me. So, uh, so yeah, that version three software uh, firmware, I should say, has really made a difference. That is the one thing, the one job I have managed to do recently is my firmware updates. So, team, that was uh, episode two. I hope you enjoyed uh, checking out everyone's photos tomorrow. Episode three, the final in the series, we're going to uh, take a look at the last three photographers and um, maybe I'll even put a few photos up of my own. So uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, please subscribe, press the little bell so that you can be notified uh, next episode and for future interviews and episodes that we do. For not only this, uh, five photo folio, but um, I'm doing interviews with General Crew, all those names that you see at the end of a film, I want you guys to know what they do because every single person on a film set 
is an integral part of making a movie. Okay team, see you for episode 3.